Now let us analyze a very important trigonometric equation which represents simple harmonic motion. The equation is 3 cosine x minus 4 sine x equals to k times cos of x minus alpha where alpha is angle between 0 and 360 degrees and k is greater than 0. You need to find the value of k and alpha. That is what you need to find. Now, this is a very important question. Some of you are very conversant with it as a simple harmonic motion equation. And those of you who haven't seen it, I like them to analyze this in greater details. Now, let's try to understand this equation. Let me first copy it down. It says 3 of cos x minus 4 sin x equals to k times cos of x minus alpha. Now cos of x minus alpha can be expanded and we can write this as k times cos of x cos of alpha plus sine of x sine of alpha. Now, if you compare left side and the right side, what you notice is that we do have cos x terms in both, that is cos x and cos x. There are two terms here, and sin x and sin x, right? Now, if you compare, then what we can say is that if these two equations are equal, that means we can write 3 as equals to k times cos alpha, right? And we can write minus 4 as k times sin alpha, right? So that is what we are going to do now. So comparing these two equations, we can write what is sin alpha. Sin alpha should be equal to minus 4 k times sin alpha, right? So there is k before it. Similarly, k times cos alpha should be equals to 3. That is what we get. Now, since k is positive, k is greater than 0, that means sin alpha should be negative and cos alpha should be positive. Now, when is that possible? That is possible if we are considering which quadrant? Sine is negative. Sine is negative in these two. And cos is positive in these two. So we are talking about quadrant 4. Correct? So remember that part. So we are talking about quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, sine is negative and cosine is positive. Now, we need to find angle alpha, right? So we can divide these two equations and then what do we get? If we divide, that is to say k times sine alpha over k times cos alpha equals to minus 4 over 3. Now k and k cancel out, right? And you get tan alpha equals to minus 4 over 3 or alpha equals to tan inverse of so what we will do here is we'll just forget about the minus sign for the time being right let's find the related acute angle right so let me say we are not finding alpha we are finding related acute angle a right so that means some angle in this quadrant so what we will do is that will write tan inverse of 4 over 3 and calculate this out. So we get second function tan inverse within brackets 4 divided by 3 equals to 53.1301. So we get here 53.1301. So let me just write, we can round it to 53.1, that's good enough. So now we know that acute angle is 53.1 but since we know 
we are interested in quadrant 4. So angle alpha which is actually between 0 to 360 has only one possible value and that is in quadrant 4 right which we are going to get by writing 360 minus 53.13 so from here we get that angle alpha is equals to 360 degrees minus 53 let me write just one okay 53.1 and we get that angle approximately as equals to 306.9 correct so that is our first answer so we have got one so that is alpha is equals to 306.9 correct so that's the first part now let's try to figure out what is the value of k now to find the value of k what we can do is let's call these equations give them a number one and two now to find alpha what we did was we did equation 1 divided by equation 2, right? That resulted into alpha. Now, in this case, what we will do is we will square them and add them up. So, what we are trying to do now is equation 1 square plus equation 2 square. This is what we will do now to find the value of k. So, if you square this, what do you get? You get k square sine square alpha, right? plus, and we add them, plus k square cos square alpha. On the other side, we get minus 4 square. So first you square and then add, okay? Don't add and square. There's a difference in 2, okay? Now this, plus 3 square. So first we square these. So let's say we get equation 3. We square the second equation. We get equation 4. And then you add them up okay so that is the process so in this case if I take k square common I'm left with sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha and here we get 16 plus 9 now what is sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha you got it it's just one right so we get k square equals to 16 plus 9 which is 25 and if you square root both sides then since k is greater than 0 we'll take only the positive value and so we get k equals to 5 so that is the value of k which we get right now from here we can write down our answer so we get k as equals to 5 and alpha as equals to 306.9 so that is the solution for this given equation well some of you must have noticed that you could have got this k value as some of these two square root correct that is what we did right so basically to summarize here what is important is to say that k is equals to square root of coefficients of these two terms right their squares add them up and find the square root let me put them in brackets so that is how you can get the value of k and as far as the alpha is concerned we can always get that from tan alpha which is equals to let me write them in terms of a and b right then it becomes kind of easier for us to analyze right so so I could have written here A and B also, or let me just continue with it, as equals to 4 over 3, right? And we'll consider the negative value, but within squares, we have to take absolute values, right? 4 over 3. So I'd like you to explore this simple harmonic equation, analyze it. There are so many dimensions to it, and then I think you'll appreciate it much more. Anyway, at least you know how to solve these kinds of questions. Thank you and all the best.